Hi, my name is Angela Adkins. A few weeks ago, I did a video for Tennessee Voices of Victims for Crime Victims Rights Week. And I did a brief summary about when my family and I were struck nearly head on by a drunk driver when I was only 14 years old. I shared about the devastation that it caused by someone's choices to drink and drive. And I shared about the importance as a victim for my voice to be heard and for me to have support. And I did get that and it did make a difference in my life. So today what I wanted to do was do a video to share about the goodness of God and the miracles that he did in my life. I, along with a friend of mine, wrote a book titled Miracle Road, A True Story of Faith for Healing and Restoration. That's the subtitle, A True Story of Faith for Healing and Restoration. God performed so many miracles in my life. I share about the devastation and the night of the crash and what I went through and what I went through during the recovery process. But I also share the miracles that God did for me, like breathing life back into my body, healing my stomach right before the doctor's eyes, and also supernaturally restoring bone in my back. So I wanted to take one of those miracle stories and just give you a little more detail about it, but hope to encourage you to get my book and read it because I do share scriptures about healing and how you too can build your faith to receive from the Lord because he does want to heal. He does want to restore. Um, at one point, I, on my 15th birthday, I had to have major back surgery because my injuries were, uh, my right collarbone was broken, my left hip was dislocated, my pelvis was fractured in six places, and my back was broken in the mid-low part. It was the T12L1 level, which is the mid-low part of your back, was broken and my spinal cord was damaged at the time. And the doctor said it looked like someone took an ax, chopped my back in two, and then pulled it apart. And how that happened was the impact slung me back and forward so fast that it snapped my back in two, and then the movement of the car shifted my spine and damaged my spinal cord. So at the time, right after the crash, I was paralyzed from the waist down. But by God's grace, that's another miracle where I have all of that back now, just my ankles and feet, which um, I tell a little bit more about that in the book. Um, but I believe that that's coming too. But on my 15th birthday, they had to go in and there was a crushed vertebrae. So they had to take some bone out and they took bone from my hip for my right hip to do a bone graft to do on both sides and repair the crushed vertebrae. And then they put rods in my back. And that was my 15th birthday, four hours in surgery, two and a half hours in recovery. It was painful, a painful surgery to recover from. Well, um, so a little bit of time had passed and they sent me to um, Chicago to the Shriners Hospital there for recovery um, to learn how to cope with my disability, but we had grabbed a hold of faith and said that I would not be in a wheelchair for the rest of my life, which I also share in the book that I'm not, um, and that I'm not paralyzed from the waist down anymore. But um, when we had gotten there a little bit after time between therapy and everything, they decided to do a myelogram test on me because I was having to wear a back brace at the time. So they wanted to see how my back was healing. So the myelogram, which is where they inserted dye in my spine, when the doctor came back to give the report, said that um, my back, the bone graft was not on both sides of my spine and therefore it wasn't done correctly according to them and they said that my spine was collapsing and that I was going to have to have another back surgery they were going to have to schedule it very quickly um, where they were going to have to go in and take more bone from my hip take a bone from my 
take one of my ribs out for the bone graft and they were going to take the long rods out and put smaller rods in. He told me that if I did not have the surgery that my back would collapse and the rods would break through my skin and um, when my back collapsed, I would lose everything I had gained at that point, which by that point I had started moving my legs again and uh, was improving, able to move on my own by then. So when he walked out of the room, it was just me and mom because my dad had to stay in Mississippi at that time um, for work. So he wasn't there when the doctor gave us that report. And I just broke down and cried. It was the first time through the whole thing that I had cried that much. So we called dad and told him the news. And he said to me, Angela, you know that God can heal you and another knife not have to touch your back until they take the rods out. And I said, yes. And he said, but if they have to do the surgery, God would be with them and it will go well. And I said, yeah, but I don't want another surgery right now. I was still recovering from the first one. So dad said, I know. He said, we're going to pray and we're going to believe. And then he told me to have the doctor call him. So the doctor called him, told him the exact same thing, gave him the exact same report that he gave my mom and I. So dad said, I want that in writing. So he had the doctor send him a letter with the detail of the results from the test and what he wanted to do. Dad was prepping for a miracle. The doctor said, I'm gonna send Angela home for three weeks. And that was the first time I had gotten to go home since the crash had happened. It was right before Christmas. And he said, and then after that, I want her to come back and I want you to come with her so that um, we can schedule the surgery. So, when I went home, while there, we attended a revival. And in that revival, as soon as you walked in the door, you could feel the presence of the Lord. At the end of the service, Dad, I was still in the wheelchair at that time, but had started getting up on the walker and moving some. But Dad rolled me up front to be prayed for. And all the young people of the church had gathered around me to pray with me. And they got me up out of the wheelchair, holding onto my hands and walking me around and praying for me. And in fact, one of my best friends at the time was at my side, just saying, Jesus, Jesus. Well, that night, after everybody was done praying for me, Dad stood up and said, while you were praying, he said, God showed me an x-ray vision of Angela's back. And he said, I saw bone going back into her back and he said that God said to him I made her back I can put that bone back in place and dad said I believe that's what happened tonight so when the time came for us to go back to Chicago and as soon as I got there they did x-rays and started doing the normal testing on me and everything and I had already told Dad I've seen so many x-rays on my back and models and everything. I just don't want to see it now. So he had told the nurse and they were already prepping that they were going to give Dad the report across the hall. Which was going to be the same report that we had before. You know, so that's what they were prepping for. Well, Dad did not tell me this till after the fact. But I was laying on the table where they test my reflexes and everything. And he could see across the hall, um, doctor, first the main doctor walked in and looked at my x-rays. And when he first looked at them, he was puzzled. He had a puzzled look on his face. And then he walked to the other side and looked at it, went to the other side and looked at it. And then he walked out and got another doctor. And then they, same thing, then they went out and got another. And he said before he knew it, the room was full of doctors looking at my x-rays with a puzzled look. So then when dad, when the nurse come in and said, okay, Mr. Hicks are ready for you. So he walked over and I was laying there. It wasn't but a few minutes and the nurse comes in the room and just starts fidgeting with stuff. And then she said, I'm just going to let your dad tell you the good news. And then she walks out. And I'm laying on the table and I'm like, good news? 
what good news. And then I just lifted my hands and started praising the Lord because I knew what the good news was before Dad even came in there. And when Dad came back in the room, he told me that the, when he first walked in the room, the doctor said, well, Mr. Hicks, I told you that Angela was going to need back surgery another back surgery and dad said yes and he said well surgery's not necessary now and dad knew why but he wanted the doctor to say it and dad said what about that bone you said was missing and he said well it's there now and he pointed to the old x-ray where it was missing and the new x-ray they had just done that day and the bone was there there was no he said her back is healing fine uh, bone graft and everything and the bone that was missing everything is there she is she's healing and he said there is no need for surgery there's no need for basically another bone graft i didn't need that so we knew god had done what he showed dad in that x-ray vision that he had restored bone in my back three years later um i went to the shriners hospital in philadelphia and they said my back had healed so well that they could go ahead and take the rods out. So they scheduled the surgery to take the rods out. And of course he had dad sign papers, mom and dad signing the papers that if they had to do another bone graft, they could go ahead and do it. Well, um, of course we prayed prior to like, I don't need another bone graft. My back is fine. So when I woke up after the surgery, that was one of the things I asked at first was, did you have to do another bone graft? And then the doctor said, nope, your back was totally fine. So just another testimony to what God can do. He does creative miracles and he restored bone in my back. So God did that for me. He can do that for you. I love to quote Mark 9, 23 all the time where Jesus said, if you can believe, all things are possible to them that believe. Mark eleven twenty four. 24, he talks about when you pray, believe that you receive and you will have them. You will have what you're praying for. The verse before that, he was talking about you can speak to the mountain and tell it to move and it will move when you believe and do not doubt. Um, James five fifteen says that the prayer of faith will heal the sick and they they will be well. Um, they will be lifted up. So the thing is to have faith and belief. He will do what he said he will do when you believe him at his word. And that's what I want to encourage you today is believe him at his word. All through his word, Jesus healed everyone that came to him. So when we look at scripture, we can know that healing is the will of God. He wants to do that. He wants us to walk in healing and health. Um, and that's not just me saying that. When you get in the scripture, you will see that is true. I want to encourage you to get my book, Miracle Road, because I do go into more detail about all the other miracles that God did in my life. Um, and then I do share healing scriptures as well, where you can, from Genesis to Revelation, scriptures to hold on to and to build your faith to receive from the Lord because God does want to do a miracle for you. I pray that this blesses you and encourages you. Um, if you have any questions or you have a story that you want to share, please put that in the comments as well. God bless you and I will talk to you again soon. Bye for now.